All right, we're live. Welcome, guys. Welcome to the Journey Within. This is a journey of deconstruction and reconstruction of a death and rebirth. And today I am very honored and excited to be with the captivating Katara. So Katara, thank you so much for coming on. Hello, and nice to be here. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So let's just get right into it. Um, who, you know, who is Katara and like what, how do you describe what you do? Well, that's a question I've asked myself so many times, you know, because right. words just so hard to capture things sometimes. Um, I like to say that I just help people to find their truth. I help people mm. to take that journey within. So I love the title of your show and really come home to self. And I know that sometimes sounds a bit ethereal or you can't quite put a finger on it. And that's exactly it. You know, that journey home, it is hard to express that in words. And so whatever it is that you're searching for, whether it's answers, whether it's your life mission, whether it's resolving some issue you have now, it's really helping people to find the truth of it through whatever means, you know, and, and things in my toolbox, but really just coming back to basics. What are you feeling? What would you rather be feeling? What's the truth that you need to know right now? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And do you feel like all of us here on this earth are actually looking for that truth or that finding that way home? Absolutely. Now, the trick is, do we know that we're <laughs> on this Unconsciously, journey? maybe. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think that's, you know, you're a hypnotherapist yourself, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. And as we understand, you know, working with consciousness as a very broad topic, you know, what's on the surface and the things that we know, and then what's on the, you know, below the surface, what's unconscious. So we might think with our logical mind, what's our purpose, mission, what's our job, what's our career, but then on like more subtle layers, on deeper layers of our very being, our very human experience, we're all searching, we're all finding that alignment to what are we here to do. And I do yeah. think that it is quite unconscious until you realize that it's coming to the conscious. You know, I love to use the hero's journey. I don't know if you are familiar with that. Big story movies are all based on the hero's story. And that's really just letting everyone know that you're all a hero in your story. You are the lead character, right? In your life story. And so you're on a quest. In the movies, it's all, you know, captured in an hour and a half, two hours. We know what the hero's quest is. And so if we relate it to ourself, often we don't know what that quest or mission is. And that's kind of how I explain what our sole purpose and mission is. It's like that you're the hero in the story. Are you aware of what the mission is? And then once you know, then you go on the hero's journey. You know, that's that mm. unconscious bit kind of expressing in our everyday life yeah i want to ask you a really tough question here so do you think our particular hero's journey or purpose in life is predetermined by fate god source whatever you want to call it the universe or mm -hmm. is that something that we choose yeah really good question <laughs> where do i begin to answer that <clears throat> i believe that on a soul level, we kind of have a bigger mission. And that's not necessarily just from one person to the other. Like there's probably a whole group of us that collectively, let's say, have a mission of we are going to be the vibration of love. Okay, let's just go a little out there. But every lifetime, if you can accept that we might have different reincarnations in human experiences and other experiences. In every lifetime of that soul that has this overall purpose, as we reincarnate, our soul chooses different experiences in order to continue the mission, in order to learn from, oh, I didn't do that quite right, or this is how I could have done it better. You know, like just mm -hmm. like we are having personal development and personal growth, I think at a soul level, we have some overarching purpose 
And that every time we're reincarnating, that is a choice. It's a choice of, okay, this life, as I'm on my overall mission of being the vibration of love, I'm going to experience heartache. Maybe I might experience loss of a loved one. So you see there are just different facets of being able to deepen into the big mission of being a vibration of love because we still have to learn through it. So the answer is yes, we do have, it's not predetermined, it's chosen. It's, it's like the mm -hmm. essence of who we are is at that soul level mission. But every lifetime, every experience could have different, it's like different facets of the same thing. That's what I feel is the truth for me. Mm. And so if if we reject this this purpose or this, excuse me, this mission, do we just simply just reincarnate over and over and over until we get it? Or um, <laughs> what <laughs> what do you what do you think happens? I think so. Yeah, <laughs> the short hopefully. answer is yes. <laughs> and if uh, you or the audience knows anything about universal laws, I think there's some very famous universal laws out there. For example, the law of attraction. We may have heard of that, you know, sure. that is a universal law. It applies not just in our manifesting, you know, our, our best life, but in manifesting. OK, that's a universal law. And so there is a, a law called the universal law of reincarnation. Now, again, even if you don't believe that there is reincarnation in past lives, then think of it symbolically. And that's how I like to work with people in hypnotherapy. If they don't believe in past lives, I say, think of it symbolically then. And the law of reincarnation is like, you will be on this path to be on your mission. And along the way, you know, there's law of karma and wisdom affecting you as well. And so if you learn, if you learn faster, you might get things done sooner. You might accelerate or ascend in a faster speed. And if you don't, then you might take a couple of steps back. Like it's a very simple kind of way of looking at it. But I would say yes, even in our day-to-day -day life, if we don't learn the lesson, it's going to keep coming back to us. And so it's being able to like really learn how to recognize those lessons and what we're here to learn so that we can actually grow out of it and not mm. stay stuck in it. Interesting. So how did you start on this, you know, your, your hero's journey and the spiritual healing journey? And would you say like the spiritual journey is one and the same as like the healing journey? Mm, I think it is. I think it is. And I like to demystify things about what is spiritual, what is religious, what is, what is the journey? You know, even if you just call it personal development, it's the same journey. I mean, at the end of the day, we're all physical beings, but we are spiritual beings having a physical experience, you know, like you don't have to resonate with that word, but we have spirit. Otherwise, you know, why is a corpse a corpse and why is a human being a human being? Because we have some animation, that life force that's in us is spirit. And so we're all spiritual, whether or not you like that word. So I think it is the same journey. It's the same journey no matter what you call it. Hmm. How did I start? Um, I'm like forgetting your questions. <laughs> How did I start? I think if I use the hero's journey, now in the hero's journey, there's always the preparation phase. And this is the part where you're refusing the call. You're, ref you're getting signs. You're getting that little feeling of there's something more, there's something else I need to do, or I must do it. And you refuse the call. And when you refuse the call, how it shows up in your life is you're going to have frustration. You're going to have things not working out in your favor. You're going to have those experiences that really try to make you see that this is not where you should be. Can you please turn and look here and, you know, pivot your path? And so for me, I guess it was uh, well, 2017. I had, uh, I used to work in corporate. And I had a decade in, in corporate, corporate finance, corporate strategy, and I had some amazing jobs. I was telling you earlier, I used to work for the airline. I got to travel and so many amazing things. But that call was that real feeling in my heart that this isn't me. Like, I feel so unfulfilled and this isn't the life I want to live. 
And so first step was the recognition of this feeling. And then second step, which don't forget, doesn't matter how much you know things, if you don't take purposeful action, then it doesn't matter. You know, you can stay in bed and dream into la la land and whatever. But if you don't do purposeful actions, like actually action upon it, then it doesn't matter. And so the actions I took was, okay, so what am I going to do about it? And so I did do soul searching. You go on a retreat, you go on some training. (laughs) So I went on my (laughs) yoga retreat. (laughs) I did teacher training and I knew that it wasn't because I wanted to be a teacher. I was just looking for, okay, like, give me some inspiration universe, you know, like show me something. And so I did, you know, I, I started with yoga and then literally it's like, you know, and you're following the breadcrumbs and it seemed like that way. I just, I went onto this, then that got me interested in, in energy work. So I started with Reiki. Then very quickly after that, I was discovering uh, hypnotherapy. I was like, oh yeah, let's do that. So I resigned from my job, followed my intuition to say, I need to go and study this thing. And I took three months, I was in the US studying in person for hypnotherapy, which I use oh, no in my way. practice. Mm. Um, so just following the breadcrumbs. And literally, that's what led me here to Australia as well. Just literally following this feels good. This feels good. I need to explore that. And really having the courage to take action. Yeah. How do we differentiate between um, what feels good in terms of like purpose and what feels good, perhaps just from ego? Mm. Yes. Well, for me, it's been a learning and practice of what I call tuning in into really discerning, is not my mind or ego that's telling me I should do something? Or is that actually my higher self or in alignment with what I'm trying to express? You know, am I going with the flow that's most aligned with what my energy and my soul wants to do? Or am I actually trying to make a square thing fit in a round hole? And a lot of times, if we can actually, if I, I have taken that time to take deep breaths, really connect with myself, and actually ask, okay, is this what I want to do? I think my answers have always been pretty clear. And if I have followed a decision and then later it didn't work out, I still don't think that it was a mistake. It's then the question of what am I supposed to learn from that? Like what, how did that right. help me to grow? And that's, that happens all the time. Yeah. So really trusting that bigger divine plan that, my soul has come here to learn if this human experience is here to learn all these experiences are there for you to experience for you to experience life so i've just been really now it's now it's a a practice like of, of every every moment you know really feeling is that actually what i want is that good for me or is that just uh a whim or overruled by my emotions you know, not acting from our emotions, but acting from a place of calmness and centeredness and peace. Yeah. Have you always been uh, a very intuitive type of person? <laughs> I have not. <laughs> no? Okay. Um, I, I probably, in hindsight, which is always twenty twenty, I think that I probably always followed intuition even when I moved abroad, you know, in, in 2010, I moved uh, from Canada to the Middle East. And that was following some kind of calling for adventure. And this following of the breadcrumbs path, I think has been following intuition, but I just didn't know that it was that. I didn't know that that's what it was. So now, you know, fast forward, now we're 2022. I would like to think, oh my goodness, you know, if people just realized that they could access their intuition in this way that they can ask, ask information instead of waiting for it to come, you know, waiting for the gut feeling, waiting for the hunch. We don't have to wait. Now, if I want to know something, I actually just ask. I'm like, okay, you know, should I, should I do this podcast with Justin? Okay. (laughs) And I literally would feel into it, you know, different ways of, of asking information. And that's how I, that's how, that's how I'm guided in every decision, literally everything from agreeing to do this, 
wanting to do it, feeling like it's right, to moving countries. I've taken huge life decisions based on this intuition. So we are all intuitive beings. But I think that we've just forgotten. We've forgotten how to actually have this two-way conversation. And whether you call it the conversation with your inner self or the conversation with the universe and source, it's the same connection. And I think we've just forgotten mm -hmm. how to do that. So we're all intuitive. So yes, I was always intuitive, but no, I didn't always realize that. And now it's like, I can't imagine my life without it. Right. It's like you learn these lessons and these insights, um, healing modalities, and, and you look back, at least for me, and I'm like, how did I live before I knew this? I know, like, right? What, what happened here? What was I doing? Um, but actually, I wanted to ask you, um, I think you mentioned it, right? The the conversation with our inner voice or the universe or source, and you're saying it's the same thing. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you if you've thought that the unconscious mind and I guess the, the divine would be the same thing or are they separate or does it really matter? Hmm. I, I haven't really done a whole lot of studies in, in psychology, for example, and understanding models of the mind, but I think if you take Carl Jung's look at the mind where we have our conscious mind, we have our unconscious, we also have the collective conscious and unconscious. So that's number one. And the second thing is when we are connecting to the collective, is it the same as connecting to source? Mm, yes and no. Yes, because, you know, source and this field of energy that we're all in, like we are all connected, definitely. So when I'm tuning into, let's say, a more collective thing, okay, what's happening in the world right now? You know, what, what is, is this fear that people are feeling? Is that your individual and personal fear and how that presents? Or is it a collective energy that's called fear that we're plugged into? So that's mm -hmm. more like collective stuff. But is that the truest and highest vibration of that oneness and that collective energy, which is actually spirit? I would say no. Because spirit or source or universe, you know, is the one that encompasses it all. And it has every vibration of fear, your individual one, all the collective ones. But it also has an equal amount an abundance amount of love, acceptance, compassion, and all those lovely things. So I feel like source is everything, everything, everything from our physical experiences, our spiritual experiences, all of these energies that we're talking about, you know, it encompasses everything. So I think when I'm tuning in, and especially if I'm doing, you know, healing work for people, I'm wanting to feel into, okay, what's your exact fear? You tell me you have fear. Okay, what's that? And because that vibration of fear has a resonance with that collective one, you know, that's why we might get amplified in the things that we're feeling. It's then asking source to say, well, how, how does, let's say, Justin unplug from that specific fear and that fear pattern. So source is like, I don't like the word above because it's not necessarily above, but it's all around us. And it's that universal and pure energy as opposed to some specific vibration which can be in the personal or collective unconscious i've never explained that, that before was... but does that make sense that was just yeah like that was really interesting coming in. <laughs> yeah that's that's very cool i love your uh your, that that model that you just explained that's very cool um going back to your your journey what was the moment where you realized oh yeah i'm a shamanic healer or a healer <laughs> or I meant to do this work. What, what was that moment for you? Oh, you know, that moment probably wasn't even all that long ago because wow. as much as we have an overall hero's journey and that whole thing of not hearing the call, I followed that call in 2000 and whatever, 17 when I did yoga. But that call, you know, as you grow and as you're on your journey, you just have more and more calls. You just have more and more things that universe is trying to get your attention. And so even if the bigger call was actually, you're a medicine woman, you're supposed to do this work, 
I was still refusing it. Even though I had done, I don't know, thousands of hours of training by then, I was still a hobby healer. I'll just do it on the side. Oh, maybe I'll just take one more corporate job. You know, like, can you see that these are my yeah. thought forms of still refusing the call, even though I'm doing it, I'm doing it, but there's still something that holds me back that says, oh no, but you know, let, let those people who've been doing it for decades, you know, they're the healers. You know, you're, you studied in this, like, are you going to give up a decade of your education and your chartered accountancy degree and then do this? So you see, I still had many layers of my thought forms and limitations before I really answered the call. Hmm. And so it's, it's probably taken me the last two years, you know, coincidentally, it's the two years that everyone in the world should slow down and actually look at themselves. Yeah. This has been an opportunity in disguise. If you can look at the glass half full. It's like, what's the call here? What are they, What is source asking you to look at? And are you willing to look at it? And for me, it was this big thing in my face of the world needs this work. And I am just a part of the puzzle needing to contribute to that. So are you going to step up to it? Are you going to step up to the plate? You know, are you in the game? Or are you not in the game? <laughs> are you going to bat? Or are you not going to bat? <laughs> and so that was my you know, part of my shadow work, part of my, what's in my unconscious, that's not letting me go forward. And mm. as I, you know, go into it, if I'm allowed to speak, you know, kind of woo woo stuff, it's like lifetimes of being burned at the stake, you know, being civilizations have ended because we didn't win, you know, the patriarchy and suppression of the feminine, you know, like, it's like, literally, as I do all this healing work, it's like all of that energy was coming up because it's repeating, it's manifesting in my current lifetime, in my in the current energy, because the energy around it is, it's like kind of like a pressure cooker, you know, it's like bringing it up. And so as it comes up, oh, okay, I've had that lifetime before where if I speak up about this stuff, I will not be accepted. If I speak up and talk about magic, they're gonna burn me at the stake because I'm a witch. You know, these energies are in us. We are all connected in that oneness, but in our lineage of lifetimes and reincarnations, if you have that energy before, how can I come up and then say, oh yeah, you know, this is what I do. I have a deep unconscious fear that I'm gonna be persecuted for it. And so that's been kind of my shadow work for the last two mm -hmm. years, like before I was able to step up to the plate and actually, you know, have a go at fulfilling my mission. It's like needing to clear the layers of, you know, nonsense and stuff that may have served me in the past lessons that I needed to learn, but not anymore. You know, this is a lifetime where that is not going to happen again it's because I'm working on it because we're clearing it. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. What, what do you think made you uh, take the jump? <sighs> I think it's for me, it's like really feeling into, well, what's the future I want to live. Right. If I ask you, or I ask myself, let's talk about me. Like, what's the future I wanna live? What kind of job? What am I doing in my day-to-day? -day? How do I feel in my day-to-day -day? in the future, right? Vision of myself, if I could wave a magic wand and do magic, how would my life look like? And then that real question that follows, which is if I continue on my current path, am I gonna get there? And the answer is no. Hmm. And so I have to, again, pivot to be like, all right, so what are the actions I need to actually do in order to be that. And so it's always a choice point, whether it's in your one-on-one -on -one healing work or in your life, you're always faced with the choice. All right, so do you want that vision of cat? Yes, okay, you need to do this. No, I feel really comfortable where I am. I make nice money, I get to travel the world, I have a comfortable life. And if the answer is yes, I'm okay with that, then I don't need to change. Does that make sense? Like, and I think that's yeah, probably yeah. the same for everyone. Like, if you want to make a change in life, <laughs> what good is it if you just keep telling yourself or everyone else about it, but you don't do anything differently? And so wow. then if the next question is, but how do you do things differently? Well, that's why you have teachers, you have guides, you have healers, you have mentors. And so I don't really like using titles because, you know, it labels you and we are everything, you know, you meet whoever you need to meet at the right time. But it is important. Like I call myself, I do say I'm a guide, I'm a guide. You know, I help people to see what they can't see. 
I'm going to look in your shadows and tell you what's holding you back. If you're willing to look there, you know, it's like yeah. really wanting. And if people want to do it, right, let's talk about law of attraction again. You want to have a change in life, then the people and the experiences will come forward in your life like a trail of breadcrumbs. And it will be up to you whether you want to follow them or not. That's what I think. Yeah. Well, talk about uh, shamanism and what what is that? Uh, how did you get get into it and and what does it do? Shamanism is probably very misunderstood. Probably has a, a lot of misconceptions, and you know you might already think of certain things when you hear that word. So I want to simpli I want to simplify it. Really keep it simple, and I like to say that shamanism is a way of life. It's a way of being where we recognize, honor, acknowledge the spirit in all things. The spirit in you, the spirit in me, the spirit in the plants and the trees around us, the energy in everything. We are energy beings. And so there's an energy of love, fear, and all of these things. Shamanism is seeing that we are always actually living in two worlds, the ordinary world where you and I are having this chat right now, and the non-ordinary world, which is more subtle, you know, where information is coming in for me. Sometimes you ask me questions that I've never answered before, and that information isn't just coming from my knowledge, from my mind. It's coming in from, again, what I call source and other world information. And so walking between the worlds is shamanism, always being able to be connected to everything that you can see and everything that you cannot see. And that both are very real. Both are very real. As we work in these altered states of consciousness, whether it's through plant medicine, ecstatic dance, you know, drumming, journeying, these are all altered states of consciousness, hypnosis, it's, it's just one way in, but the cosmology of seeing the world under shamanism is that spirit is in everything. We have divine helpers all around and that there is a source and that our consciousness is what lives and carries on within all of us. And that, you know, death of the body is just, is just the body. When you introduced the show and you said that it's about deconstructing and death and rebirth right away I think of my my power animal my birth animal totem is the phoenix and the phoenix is is all about letting the things in you die what's no longer serving and allowing that to be reborn again right this is the immortal concept and so it is in our life we are born all the time in these human bodies and we die but our consciousness, the spirit lives on. And yeah, that's yeah. shamanism <laughs> in a nutshell. So, so it sounds like it's more like a, uh, a philosophy in a way of life, not necessarily like a woo-woo like practice or something. Mm. So like technically, could you be like, you could use hypnosis, but you could be a shaman embodying that philosophy. Mm. I definitely think that living shamanism, you know, is a way of being, okay? Like once I know this map, as you say, it's like, I can't, I can't go back. I can't unlearn this. I can't unsee this. This is the way I live now. So how does that differentiate you from other healers or what does that mean? It is, it is actually a modality. So when I okay. do healing work, uh, I don't necessarily follow a script or a protocol. I don't necessarily, you know, like, let's say Reiki, maybe people know Reiki more and, you know, you put your hands here and then you're working with the chakras here and then you do this here, like there's a protocol. And I think it's a beautiful way to have a structured system, you know, especially in teaching. But as you learn your intuition, for example, and as you deepen into your own medicine, which is after lifetimes of accumulation and your own expression of energy, then shamanic healing is really being guided by source. So one of the things that we say when we do shamanic healing is we become the hollow bone, a bone that's hollow. So that means that we are a channel. So we are channeling spirit as it comes through. 
And so that might look like the words that I use, that might look like literally ch channeled information, but it's also allowing you know the energy to flow through me, maybe through my hands, maybe through my body. I allow sound to channel through me all the time. So I use sound medicine. So I'm making ikarus, or you're catching a song, that's what shamans say, because sound is a frequency, it's a vibration. So that's being channeled through me. I have no idea what sound I'm gonna make until I make it. And that's not something that's taught. I mean, you have to practice it and really, again, trust the information coming through. But working shamanically really means that you're connecting to source, connecting to the Akash, which is the source of everything, the library of all knowledge of all our souls, of the souls of whoever I'm looking at, and getting the information there, really looking at it beyond the intake of, okay, tell me about your problems. I don't even need to know. You know, when people come, the intake, okay, you know, you fill out some forms, you tell me about it, but actually it's like the information is already there. I need to know some basics, but basically I just ask spirit and say, okay, like what, what does Justin need to know? What does this client need to know? And that will come through. So in that sense, absolutely, it is a modality and it is a very different way of, of working. Does that make yeah. sense? I mean, that seems very, very ideal. I mean, like if, if you, you know, you just know, oh yeah, like you're dealing with this problem and this is how we solve it. And boom, that's yeah. like, you don't need years of, uh, hopefully, you know, years of counseling or something, right? Like, yes. Huh. Yeah. Yes. You know, I studied counseling because I'm here on a student visa. So the, I, I signed up for the counseling diploma and I think great respect, you know, for people in that, um, you know, where, wherever they need to meet clients where the stage in which clients come to counseling and i really just reflect about that and think oh thank goodness i'm not in that mainstream model or that counseling because i feel man this is going to take ages this is going to take 20 hours before we even get to let's do some real work here yeah, again yeah. great respect to systems and structures that are in place and safety and making sure that all the i's are dotted and the t's are crossed it's really important but I just want to get straight into it. You know, I just want to get straight into the soul reason, you know, the, the, the energetic reason. And I think it's in, important that there's a balance between all of us who are serving, whether you're a counselor, a coach, a medical doctor, or a shamanic practitioner, we're all needed. And I know that you practice hypnotherapy and that's something I use all the time. In the shamanic session, if I'm guided to tell that person, okay, this is a problem, then I'll do it. But if I'm guided that, look, this person really has a hard time believing, they need to experience it themselves, then I use hypnotherapy and allow them to experience it. I, I guide mm -hmm. them to see what they need to see. It's the same thing. It's just that in hypnosis, they're doing it, they're seeing it, they're experiencing it. Whereas if I'm doing you know, shamanic journeying, I bring in the information that I tell you. And I definitely have had sessions, other modalities where I'm like, I don't, I don't resonate with what they're saying. They're telling me this and that and whatever. I'm oh, okay. And she out for a second. Um, okay. Give me one moment. We'll be right back.
Hey, welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> that was hilarious. I just all of a sudden, oh no, she left. She was raptured. I, I was actually like, the oh, I think spirit didn't want me sharing that. <laughs> I don't even remember uh, what you're sharing, honestly. Me neither. Now I'm like, okay. okay. I mean, shh, we cleared that. So <laughs> we'll have to just start from here. <laughs> so, geez, I, I really, honestly, at this point, I don't have any intelligent questions about shamanism other than just like, can, can anyone become a shaman? I think that our natural self is actually shamanic. So again, if we come back to shamanic is that we acknowledge the spirit in all things. I think our true nature is shamanic. We live with earth, you know, living with land, that we are living in harmony with all our relations with the people, our tribe, the relationship with nature. And I think that it's in this modern civilization of the world that we have forgotten our true nature, which is that we need to live in harmony and that we live with nature, you know, not just pillaging the earth for resources and taking, you know, it's like, how can we live in this harmonious relationship with nature and everything and all the relations around us? So it's naturally in us to follow the sun and the stars to understand time, to follow the seasons. What do we grow to eat? Where is the cattle and the bison moving? You know, where is food? It's just that in modern civilization, you know, now we go to the, the grocery shop and, you know, it's not called a, a cow that we're eating. It's called beef. You know, we've like completely taken away, like, what is it that we're actually inherently or in, in naturally doing which is we're feeding off we're living off of the animals and living off of land like we don't anymore so i think we've forgotten the shaman shamanic way we've forgotten our shamanic and connection to nature so that's a long way of answering that yes all of us again have that ability to connect to our intuition and all of us have the ability to connect to this way of living shamanically and if you do that that's actually honoring your true nature it's actually honoring all of nature does that mean that we're all shamanic healers no but it means that we can live in alignment with nature and this is what living shamanism is it's not that we're all here being shamans and being the village medicine man or medicine woman no there are those who need to do that that's their role but living shamanically means living with nature right like mm -hmm. think of all all religions really i mean at the at the crux of it all is 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 oneness no matter how you describe it and whether it's the dao you know the way of the dao that is shamanism the, the the chinese the wu like that's all shamanism we have just forgotten this map of shamanism with modern civilization with agriculture with cities and so now to experience shamanism we think of the medicine man in the jungle <laughs> but you know like it's how do we bring these ancient medicines in a way that we can apply them in our day-to-day -day life now you know what is shamanism now what is Taoism with the shamanic background you know not not the kind of watered down version necessarily like how do you bring these wisdoms like what is the Tao? it's following nature everything is around elements you know that's another point of connection so every culture actually has shamanic roots they're everywhere in the world. Hmm. In North America, I guess you, you have the Native Americans. In South America, you have the Machis in Chile. You have all the Andean and the Peruvian, you know, shamans. You have the Shinto in Japan. You have uh, here, you have the Aborigines in Australia. You know, in, in Europe, you have maybe, maybe Vikings. You know, like they're all, they're actually all shamanic traditions, living with land, living with nature, the Celtics. Mongolians, Chinese, African, you know, like shamans are everywhere. It's actually all within the indigenous communities. Yeah. So how do we bring shamanism to say into like the city where there's like not really a whole lot of nature and it's just mm -hmm. a bunch of nine to five, you know, we clock in, clock out, go home, watch TV, you know, yeah. and, and do that whole thing all over again. 
Yeah, it's really hard. And I've, I've really been experiencing it myself. You know, I live in the city, in the city of Sydney. Beautiful. Lots of things available. And actually, we're quite probably blessed to have beaches and the bush here so you can go in nature. So living more with nature means that you do have to carve out time, just like you carve out time for self-care. What's our individual way of reconnecting to nature? Maybe f- like for me, all I can do right now is, well, we have, you know, we, we, I live by the water. So it's, it's having a water walk, connecting with water. You know, how does water make me feel? Putting our feet on the ground, connecting with Mother Earth. You know, we're often on our computers all day, you know, do, we're, we're keyboard warriors and that's amazing, but we need to go outside. You know, what's nature telling us? Every time there's a change in the storms and the weather, it's like, oh yeah, today it feels really cleansing. Oh, today it's really heavy in the air. You know, everything is communicating with us. And so embracing things shamanically means really connecting back to you and how do I feel What is intuition? What is spirit actually telling me? How do I go in nature so that nature is communicating with us? And then observing even the simplicity of putting our feet on the ground. How does that make me feel? Is it actually more grounding? Is that just some new age people saying that it's grounding if you put your feet on there? It's like inviting you to actually go and do it. And it means needing to take time away from the work that's always going to be there all the things that we have to do, it's always going to be there. So why not schedule it in? If that's what people have to do, then they have to. Otherwise, it's just more and more disconnection. And we have enough of that right now in the world, don't we? More and more disconnection, you know, bombardment of of work all the time and all the energies around us that we can't even swim our way out of it. We don't even know what mess we're in. So how about just starting with a simple practice of feeling like, what, what, what am I feeling today? you know simple yeah. Start simple yeah what what are some other practices that you would recommend people doing to connect to themselves yeah or? to connect to real to to self to to heal um yeah all those those kind of things yeah so connecting to self i i just call it a self reflection practice this is really important It doesn't have to be journaling. It doesn't have to be walking by the water, but to take that time and to choose an activity that is your self-reflection time. And in that process, to acknowledge what am I feeling? What are the thoughts coming up? What am I responding to? How am I responding to it? This self-reflection part can really help process things that are happening and to really connect back to Mm, the, the feelings, okay? I want to emphasize on the feelings, not the thoughts. Another exercise that I I would like to share, and I'm just pausing because it's <laughs> I'm waiting for it to come. <laughs> mm. I think to remind people to be curious, to remind people to be okay. curious. If anything in this beautiful 40-something minutes that we've been chatting that people have been, have their interest peaked with anything in particular, that they have resonated with any of the things I said about feeling it not quite enough, um, feeling discomfort, you know, feeling wanting more. If people, anyone feels that, to have the curiosity to do something about it. And do something about it can be as simple as go read a book, go book a session, Go explore your local, you know, whatever offering is there. Go and do it. Like, this is how we get to know ourselves by trying new things. So I want to remind everyone that curiosity is also our innate nature and that follow it, you know, you'll be very surprised of where that road might lead. You have this quote on your, uh, on your website, which really, for whatever reason, it just struck me. Um, it's a pretty popular quote. Uh, as within, so without. As above, so below. Mm. Um, could you could you elaborate on that and, and why that's important? Mm. The way that I interpret this quote, it's like whatever is inside you is actually outside you. 
the world that is within, that's why we want to take the journey within, is actually expressed in the world around us. That's how essentially I interpret it. And so if our, so let's look at the world situation. For many of us, and I don't deny it, has been very difficult times, it's very challenging. And if we can maintain and be in that very centered space of a high vibration frequency of love and peace, okay? Or let me just, let's pick peace because I think people struggle with the word love and what it actually means, but let's, let's go peace. If you're in a state of peace inside with who you are, with what's going on, really being able to hold the vibration of peace, then even if it's chaos outside, things are happening, expressing themselves in the 3D world, but you can still be in a state of peace. Sometimes it's a bit like, oh, if I choose happiness, you know, I'm going to be happy. Yes, it is choosing. It's choosing to stay in a vibration of peace. And so that's, that's what it really just means to me, you know, like everything is a matter of perception. Yeah. And so if I can perceive it through the lens that is just peace, you know, things will, will manifest in that way. And I believe that. And it, it happens for me. It doesn't mean that my life is not difficult and that stuff's not happening outside. It's happening. But you can perceive it with a bit of grace, a bit of acceptance, and really stay elevated, which is, you know, why do we say high vibes? You know, because being in a state of peace and love is a higher vibration than staying in fear and lack and anxiety, right? So it's like, how do you stay? It's like needing to maintain doing the self-care and the work that needs to happen in order to stay in that state. And it doesn't mean it's there, right? It's a roller coaster. I need to work through my fears and my shadows and then it comes up and then, okay, life is beautiful. Life is always beautiful and that needing to stay there. So that's what that means to me and really inviting people to contemplate, like, is that true? If I'm in a state of peace, is the outside gonna be in peace? I have experienced that myself. And um, yeah, the way I understand it is if we are in a resource state of peace, then we're in the best, um, we have the best chance of actually responding in a way that's conducive for growth or for, you know, good fruit. Mm. That's how I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, last question. What, um, what's your vision for this world? Hmm. What I feel is our truth is that we are moving towards a more peaceful earth, that we are moving towards the light. And that means that all of us are feeling these calls now. All of us are being tugged, you know, energetically. It's like, you know, a kid pulling at you. All of us are there because that future that's bright and shiny is one that is more in the vibration of this peace and love that I speak of, more harmony, you know, more realizations of people coming back to their true nature and really realizing all the things that is just psychological operations and not real, okay? And in this process, I think that birthing, let's go back to your phrase, there needs to be a death and a deconstruction of how earth is right now because it's just not working. The energies are just not healthy. And <laughs> it's a very loaded last question because there's so much to say about it, but I really do have the full trust in this big divine plan that the earth is heading towards a good place. And we all have a role to play and we all have a unique vibration that is needed in the world because someone needs to hear what you need to say. Someone needs to experience you because we're all enmeshed and entangled in each other's hero's story so that we all can elevate as consciousness, as humans, as souls. So the future and the vision is, is good. We're all creating a better world. And so just asking people to listen and feel that call and to move with it. Yeah. And we get to be a part of that. We do. It's we beautiful. do. This is amazing times. It might not seem like it right now, but this is an incredible time. Yes. And 
If people would like to work with you, um, how can they contact you? You can find me on my website, which is I am no, which is katarasky.com. And on Instagram, it's I am Katarasky. Um, get started on a free intuition training. That's everywhere on my Instagram and on my website, really listening to, to that voice of the inner you. And my offerings are one-to-one and also in group, really just helping people to connect to themselves, to each other, so that we can all create a better world for ourselves. Awesome. Well, Katara, thank you so much for joining me. I, this was a very, very fruitful and, and thoughtful discussion. And, um, and we get to be a part of bringing this healing to the world. So thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you for having me and sharing energy together. Much love. Awesome. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next time. Bye.